Hey everyone, Bill Nichols here. Bill Nichols TV. It's been about a week since I got something up. I've been super busy. I'll tell you a couple things going on. One, I've been traveling, heading off to Vegas this weekend. Two, I've been looking for studio space. So right now, I film all of this in my garage. Piece of paper, couple, three, four lights, laptop, table, all of that. I'm actually looking for studio space and I think that I've got something coming up. It's gonna be a little while, but I'm looking at building a larger studio. So I can get my printers, everything out. We can use our garage and I can have a dedicated space and more space to actually create stuff. So good stuff to come. Today, I wanna to talk about Lightroom and uh, I wanna talk about the radial tool, the radial blur tool. It was new, I think, in Lightroom 5. And it's something that I'll use quite a bit when I wanna get a vignette or some drama brought into an image or to focus on something in particular, but without using the regular highlight priority um, way to add a vignette. So I'm gonna show you that. And then one thing at the end of this video, talk about emailing me at billnicholstv at gmail.com. My next video, I want to do a Q&A, almost at 12,000 people now. So you send in your questions. It can be about drones, photography, videography, gear, anything. And I'm going to pick about 10 questions or so and um, start answering those. And then another thing that I'm going to start doing with Lightroom to help me do some work in Lightroom and then to show you how I work in Lightroom is I want to have people start sending me images. So you can send an image and you can just say live edit for the subject to TV at gmail.com. Each week I'm gonna try and pick one to three images and one, do a critique of the images, but then also show you how I would process those images and why in Lightroom or Photoshop, most likely Lightroom to start. It'll give you some idea of my workflow in Lightroom and it'll give you some tips and tricks on working in Lightroom and also see some edits and how images are processed. So with that, let's jump into Lightroom. We're gonna use the radio blur tool. I've got four images. Don't know if I'm gonna get through all four. It's gonna be pretty quick though. I wanna keep this video under 10 minutes. And then um, at the end, you'll see some details about sending me some stuff. So let's jump right in. All right, so I've got these four images and I'm gonna go through the radio blur tool today. And really what this does, the simplest way to show you um, kind of the effect that I'm going for is to open up a portrait here. So there's, this is on my daughter with her dog. And you can see around the edges, like around here, naturally with the lens, there's a little bit of vignetting. And one nice thing that that does is that it brings some focus into here. Now, along with the blurry, you know, kind of the, the blurred out background from the depth of field, this was shot really shallow, f2.8. Now that also puts your focus directly on the subject. But this vignette helps a lot as well. So I'm gonna tell you a couple things. I'm gonna show you two images of people. Both these images were shot middle of the day at f2.8, wide open, at about a 200th of a second. And the way that that was accomplished was with a variable neutral density filter on the lens to stop the lens to effectively cut the light. So like I was shooting at a much smaller aperture, but I wanted to be wide open so that I could get this nice creamy background here, but not have the image overexposed. So the whole image was way underexposed, and then I utilized a flash, one strobe that's kind of out here, about 45 degrees away, slightly up, probably about six feet away, big three foot octobox to light her. So one flash lit her and the pup, and then the background was blown out, um, blown out as far as the focus goes. Okay, so right here, we've got this. Let's open this up, see if I was right on what I shot it at. I don't really remember. Um, yep, 200 millimeters, ISO 100, F2.8, 1 200th of a second. So one thing that I do with a lot of images, and I'll show you some import presets later, I just created this temp catalog, so it's not here, but I, I come down, I go into a lens correction, so enable profile correction, and you can see now, if you look around, the image is gonna get a bit brighter, but pay attention to around the edges. Don't worry about the distortion that gets fixed, but around the edges, you're gonna see this kind of darker exposed part go away, and that's some peripheral illumination that it's doing where it knows that there's some natural vignetting there and it's adding some light into those specific areas based on this lens profile. But I actually quite like that look. So a lot of times what I'll do is after I'm done with my edit, at the very end of the edit, I'll come in and I'll go here to post crop vignetting and I'll add some vignetting in. So like when we, now this is a lot, I don't add this much, but you can see when that vignetting's not there, Great picture, like it. this is straight out of the camera. There's been absolutely no editing. This is a raw file, haven't changed anything. But we can bring some focus into her by this. Now, one thing that this does is you can see that this is symmetrical now, right? So there's same amount of vignetting all the way around, but yet she's off center, you know, kind of rule of third stuff here. So if I go in to look at the crop, 
And I've got pretty close to, you know, this part of her face is right here lined up in this third, going straight through the center of her body. So that just gives you some more interest in the photo instead of her being dead center. So let's um, reset this to zero. So one thing that I'll typically do with my images, and really quickly, I'll just do a super fast edit on this, is I like to change the contrast. I like my images to be pretty contrasty. So I go to uh, medium contrast. Um, up the tone right now, I mean, the white balance, it's it's uh, on auto. It was shot during daylight. So you'll see if I go to daylight, not much of a change. So that's actually what's shot. I like the warm look of this. But what I might do is just change that warm look just a little bit, not much. Come down, there's actually not much to do to this image. I could maybe crop it a little bit or not. But what I want to do is jump right into, I don't need to add vibrance or anything. It's got a pretty good histogram here. It's a little dark, so I could bring exposure up some then I feel like that's a little too golden, too warm. So maybe there about a third of a stop. So I like this. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use this radial tool. And I'll get the basics of the radial tool by doing something very exaggerated right now. So I'm gonna hold down shift. So if I hold down shift while I'm dragging, it'll lock it to a circle. So I'm gonna hold down shift. Let's just start right here. So right now, the exposure is set to minus four. Shadows are set to 74, so let's just reset all this to zero. So what you can see is that um, we've got everything that's not inside of this radial blur tool is now four stops down, but it's got this feather, right? So it's not a hard circle, but I can change that. So if I go over here, and I change the feather to 100. Now you can see that it's a much more of a gradient to the smaller area. If I hover on there, you'll see the mask. So almost the whole thing selected. If I bring the feather down to zero, it'll be a very hard circle, All right? So there you go. So that's the radial blur tool in the beginning. Now let's go back to 50. And I can invert this mask, which means instead of the effect that I'm applying right here um, taking place, if I invert it, it'll be everywhere else. But before I do that, I'll run through a couple of these. So in here, I can change the temp intent, right? So you can see that it changes across everywhere, except for that dead center part. So let's actually bring the exposure up so that you can see all this. So if I change the temp intent, right? So we've got that, here's the tent. She can actually get some cool looks. We can change the contrast here, right? Very low contrast, very high contrast. Highlights, bring those down. We're gonna make this look really weird. Shadows, up and down. One thing to keep in mind with shadows, as you raise shadows in an image, you're gonna lose some dimension because you're gonna kind of flatten the image out. So you always wanna you know, play you know, nice there. Clarity, bump it up. Um, and then saturation, right? I can make it very saturated or make the whole thing except what's right in the center, a black and white. Don't ever do this, ever. Selective color is terrible it's from like 1984. It's awful. Uh, I have only seen one or two instances where I think that it's looked good. That's my personal preference, but this is so overused and it was really overused in filters and, and everything else, but a horrible look. So let's actually reset this. So here it is. So I'll show you what I'm gonna use the radial blur for. So we're gonna take this radial tool and I'm gonna draw it out and I wanna drop this vignette, but what I want is I want a little more vignette over here than I do over here, and I don't want a crazy amount. So I'm gonna center this on her in the pup. I'm just gonna drag this out. And you can see my workspace here, like I wanna make this radial tool bigger, and I actually don't have these top and bottom handles, so if I wanted to adjust those, I've gotta move this, grab them. Since my workspace is bigger, I mean, the area, my workspace is smaller than what I wanna work in, this is a really good tip for Lightroom overall. If you come over here to the navigator, you have fit, fill, one to one, one eighth. So if I come out here, I can zoom in 11 to one, right? So that's massive. But I wanna see more of the workspace. I want a bigger workspace. So I'll come out and I'll go one fourth. Now I can see the whole thing and I can adjust those. And I can even go out further, right? So let's go to one eighth. So now I can get a really good idea of how this vignette's gonna look. So I don't want it to be that extreme. I want it to come out. And there, and I kind of, um, that still might be a bit much. I'm going to be a little heavy handed with this just so you can see what it can do. But there, now let's go into, uh, so now it's in fit. Here's the other tip for this. So now I have, look here, I have this, here's fit, and this is set to one eighth. So if I hold down space bar, I'm going to zoom out to an eighth, I'm going to come back into fit. If I change that to three to one, now when I press the space bar, fit, three to one, fit three to one. So whatever I set right here, 
whenever I press the space bar and click on the image, that is where my zoom is gonna go to. So fit and back back out. So I like that. So now I'll kind of um, take a look here. Let's come back into fit. Let's just really quickly reset the image. So there's a reset. There it is with profile correction. You can see like the, the vignette just brings your eyes right into here. I like this look. This is good for a family portrait type look or for a portrait that I'm gonna sell. Like this is a look that clients really like. So that's, that's one way to use it. Let's jump over to another image really quick. So here, this is uh, my wife and our baby daughter. Um, so Lucy and Maddie. So in the same sense here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to highlight her and get like a nice swath of light through here and maybe darken some of this other stuff up. So like there's some letters down here I would get rid of in Photoshop really quick. Um, but I wanna get some light going through them. So I wanna really keep their exposure like it is. And then I wanna just kind of darken these edges. Now, if I tried to do this with a post crop highlight vignetting, it probably wouldn't look bad. So right here, I'll just take the amount, bring it down. You know, and that actually looks pretty good. So, you know, I can get that closed in pretty good around them. But that's all the control that I have there. I mean, I can change the midpoint and the feather and everything, but I don't have the control over the shape. It's going to symmetrically apply it. So instead, I will take, let's zoom out. So there we are. I'll take the radial blur tool. I'm just going to draw this like pretty thin. And now what you can see is this is the center of it right here. So as I move this, right, I can bring that vignette up, I can bring that vignette down, and um, I'm gonna go out to a 16th and even draw that out further so I can get more of her legs to let up. So if you look down here at her legs, like right now, because there's a pretty good sized feather on here, her legs are darker, but I can bring it down like this and then really get that light in there. So I like that, position that right in the middle, and now let's come back in. This is way too heavy handed, I'll tell you that much. So let's open that back up, select it. Let's not go four stops, let's just bring it out about a stop or so, and then I can change that feather a little bit. And then bring these out just a tad. So I've got this, if I reset it, there you go, there you go. That's a little bit too much, like I'm not happy with that. But what I really wanted to show you here, like I would sit here and tweak this for quite a while, is uh, I want to show you the different options that you have. Right, so there you go. Let's reset it, bring it in. Great. So I actually think that looks good. So the radial blur tool, what it's going to give you over post-crop highlight vignetting is control of all of your major adjustment functions from your, your temp in your tent to your saturation, your vibrance, your clarity, your softness, your sharpness. So you can actually add that post-crop vignette and then bring the clarity down, bring the softness way down so that you can throw that out of focus if it's in focus. It's not gonna quite get you that depth of field, but you can do some really creative things in there. And then you can control everything, the shape of it, the effectively the opacity of it by the number of stops that you change that exposure. You can change the feather, everything about it. All right, everyone, that's it for today. So quick tutorial on the radial blur tool. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, and let's do a couple of things. One, send me questions, BillNicholsTV at gmail.com right now for the next Q&A video. I'm going to try and do maybe one Q&A a month. Now, thank you to everybody for watching, subscribing, supporting me, hanging out when I'm not able to post a video every other day. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the time that you take to watch them. That's why I take the time to make them. And then um, if you have an image that one you would like critiqued or you would like to have me edit, which I'll edit in Lightroom so that I can show you some stuff in Lightroom as well as how I would process an image, send it to me, TV at gmail.com. Subject, live edit. I think that'll work. If there's an image in there, I'm going to know what it's for. One, one rule on that, it's got to be your image. So not some image that somebody else took. Your image, because I'm going to say that it's your image on here. I don't want anything pornographic. Something that's good for all audiences. But you can send me, you know, fine art ones, whatever. Um, you know, portraiture. Um, anything and if it's great for the channel I will do a live edit I'll do a critique of it but I send those to BillNicholsTV at gmail.com thank you so much for watching I'm gonna make sure that we're getting some more Lightroom videos out so send those forward and uh, you keep watching I'll keep making videos I'll talk to you soon